He has a flare. Whoa! All right, in real life, time does not freeze at that moment. If you're not ready to deal with it, uh, this is a predator. Anytime you're fighting any predator, they have the upper hand. Hello and welcome to Gameology's Experts React. I'm Joe Alton, MD, medical doctor, preparedness advocate, magazine contributor, and co-author of the Survival Medicine Handbook, The Essential Guide for When Help is Not on the Way. Hi, I'm Nat, the preparedness guy, personal preparedness enthusiast, and professional emergency manager. And we're going to be looking at some survival games today. Let's get into these videos and see what we're going to survive today. Ah, turbulence. I hate turbulence. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. That's it. Next time, I'm taking the bus. Oh, he's underwater now. You see things floating. Thank God, a life raft. So it, it looks like it automatically awesome. deployed, which is nice. He didn't have to go and oh, do it or bit. somebody else. A situation like this, it's been proven time and time again. If you listen to the safety briefings and pay attention and actually look at where your exits are, your chances of survival go way up. That's right. Usually today's life rafts will have some supplies. Rations, an anchor. Okay, now you can get to that island. Wilderness survival skills, if you spend any time in the wilderness or might end up in the wilderness, can come in handy. Amen, brother. Nice, that was convenient. That's hard. Did you see that? You can use that as part of a shelter to collect rainwater, lots of uses. Health, hunger, hydration probably, even sun exposure. Handy to have. You know you know what, it's, it's in a video game now, but I'll bet in future tech we'll see it in real life pretty soon. Probably. Okay, so now you need to improvise some tools to help you survive. I think the yucca can be used for, for making um, cordage, but the roots are also edible. I don't know if you've been to any uh, any restaurants, like a Peruvian restaurant, some, some Hispanic restaurants have yucca fries and they're fantastic. Probably a good idea as a prepper to have a number of lighters available. <laughs> uh, but a lighter is kind of the just the gold standard. You, it works, if it gets wet, you just blow the water out of there wave it around for a couple minutes and it's ready to go again. Oh, okay. Get a crab. How about how about some crabby cakes? He that was like a them. crab steak. I think he put it in his bag. Well, not the time to get picky, but you should cook it if you have a way to make fire. So he is trying to he's cutting down some small trees to build a fire. Uh, but there's probably enough deadfall around. You want dry things. You don't want to use a green tree or green branches. All right, so there's our campfire. How is he going to light it? Okay, oh. one end is used to spin against a very dry, flat piece of wood called a fireboard. And the friction starts a fire, which you nurse along with some kindling. Um, yeah, when you're doing the friction, it, it creates just a bunch of little heated uh, like charcoal dust, and it compacts and you get an ember, and then you move that to your, your tinder. So I've never been able to do a, a hand drill fire. A lot of people have. Let's cook that crab steak. It's like a pork Yeah, tuna. yum. Okay, all right, so we made a shelter using four palm fronds. Now, I guess we're talking metaphorically here, but you need a lot more to make a shelter. All right, now it's morning, and we made a spear, and we're gonna go spear fishing. This might be my downfall in a survival situation like this. I don't like seafood. I wish I did. <laughs> I've tried every, every seafood that's ever been presented to me, and it all tastes like fish sticks. <laughs> Uh, so I just, I, I don't know. I, of course, I would eat it if I if I had to. Well, beggars can't be choosers. If this is what's there, that's what's for dinner. <laughs> exactly. Looks like he's doing everything actively. You want to set up as much passive methods for everything as possible. If you could set up a fish trap or a crab, crab cage or something like that to trap food so you don't have to actively do it all the time. So this is an alcohol plant, and basically it's good for treating burns and uh, other skin issues, you can just cut a leaf and you can actually just apply the leaf if you want it to your actual burn. I mean, you have to think of the amount of calories that are taken up by constructing this raft. So unless he knows like a location and exactly how to get there, he's probably putting himself in more danger. You'd, you'd be better off staying where you have resources. And if your, your intention is to be rescued, building a, a rescue fire or uh, putting a marker like SOS on the beach. You're, you're right, Nat. He made all these campfires, but he did make a, a fire that would be noticeable from the beach to a passing ship. Now, one way that you can identify where the next land is is if you see seabirds. 
Seabirds go away from land, go out to sea during the day, and as the evening sets in, they fly back towards land. Okay, this is now green hell. Oh, and we're climbing a mountain. Know and understand your resources. That's right. It's a prepper move to not waste the battery of the walkie-talkie. Notice their canoe that basically is essentially empty. So they've gone to this island and they have essentially no supplies. Mm -hmm. I need to find something in in my backpack. That doesn't sound suspicious okay. at all. That is a little creepy, right? You you just go up there into the green hell. I, I'll be right there. I don't know. This guy's getting played. She must have a native boo on the side. So you don't want to separate from from each other. Big mistake. This game has a vine that's used to make a mind-altering drink called ayahuasca. I'm not sure what the purpose of this vine is, but you know, lashings would be good if you're going to make a show. The bird yep. nest is actually pretty good for starting a fire. Yep, good kindling. Oh, and the hand drill again. Easy All peasy. Right. So at least in this one, yeah. they have an ember. More realistic. I was just about to say oh. it should be tied off or have a have some sort of harness. Well, look at you now. Leave the climbing to the mountain goats. You know, a fall from a four-story building results in a 50% death rate, 100% if you land on your head. So the likelihood that this guy is going to come away without some serious injury is next to none. You always need to inspect your equipment. I mean, he's climbing up. These ropes were pre-placed. That's all you have. You're lucky. <laughs> I would count myself up lucky if that's all I have right. from that kind of fall. I also wonder how he got that. Maybe it was from, from trying to climb up over the ledge when he slipped and then the rest of him's fine, but I don't see how a, a fall is going to inflict a, basically a cut on his arm. Look for Molineria. Molineria capulata, capitulata, is also known to Anglos as palm grass, and it has a long history of medical use in Southeast Asia. It's thought to have antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory properties. Might help heal that wound. Looks like he's making a poultice. A poultice is a soft, moist mass of usually plant material that you apply to relieve soreness and inflammation. Shouldn't we be seeing Mia at one point or another here? Where is Mia? That's what I want to know. Oh, now he's in some sort of shelter. Oh, and he's got a lot of supplies. Obviously, this is much later in the process here. Uh, stuff he can eat, stuff he can use for medicine. Could have been left over from the, the previous the porters. Is that a hand grenade or something? What is that on the left? Maybe a, a salt, salt or pepper shaker. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Could be. So uh, <laughs> at what point are you just going to say, yeah, I'm going to give these mushrooms a try? <laughs> the long dark. In a plane again. I hate. I hate that. I hate that. Oh, oh, oh. Hold tight. Oh. So it's a, a small plane. Coming in hot. Of, uh, the hatchet. Coming in hot. Coming in hot, Matt. Okay. Oh, that's his plane all the way up there. Uh, oh, oh, boy. Oh, oh. Now, if help was oh. on the way, you wouldn't want to remove that because it's maybe putting pressure on something that might bleed. Yeah, if you have a penetrating injury, it basically acts like a, a stopper, like a cork in the bottle. And if you pull it out, any blood flow that it's pressing against, you're going to have uh, you have the blood. It's going to start bleeding right away. So you have to be prepared to put pressure on that wound if you plan on taking it out. And out it goes. Probably lost a lot of function in that hand. Again with the climbing. He's got bare hands too. You'd want to have those covered up. Yeah. He's got rose hips. Okay, that's interesting. And it has some uh, medicinal uses. So interesting, rose hips. Got some rose hips right here. Oh, okay. Civilization. Yeah. How about that? The car looks old enough that it would have a cigarette lighter in there. So if you need to start a that's fire. That's right. So there must be power in this house and if there's power then probably someone's living there probably picked up a lot of stuff from there and it's probably getting heavy that's one thing a lot of people overlook especially at the like oh, i've got a bug out bag and it's you know it's like 75 pounds and they plan to walk days and days with it you got to be conscious of, of weight when you start carrying things it's going to wear down your body pretty quickly all right growling and a dead body, and a dead body. What is going on here? Yeah, my priority oh. would be figuring out what that growling is. If something killed this, it's probably an animal. I have uh, pretended to ice fish when I was a kid. We had a kind of a pond in our front yard. There were fish under there. 
So I guess yeah, during that right. hour he can't do anything else. Oh, salmon. So if he's mm-hmm. shivering, he's already he's already cold, but um, he's yeah. not you know, past the point of no return. It's just his body's way of trying to produce heat. 39 minutes until yeah. ready. Can't wait. Oh, now we're hunting. And we shot a... Looks like a wolf. Yeah, wow. But where there's one wolf, there, there are probably more wolves as well. He has a flare. Whoa! All right, in, in real life, no. time does not freeze at that moment. If you're not ready to deal with it, uh, this is a predator. Anytime you're fighting any predator, they have the upper hand. Oh, well, now she has a dirty wound. But, uh, you know, I'm surprised that a wolf would actually brave it through a flare. I mean, if, it, if a, wild, a campfire, you know, sort of deters wolves, then you would think a flare would, too. I love the uh, northern lights. Beautiful. Oh, there's Lots some uh, water filtration tabs, too. And the... Yeah, that's that's not a bad place to die under the northern lights. It's kind of uh, surreal. Oh, no, this is this is an exact situation I found myself in once. Something tells me we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. So the the yellow tinge around the edge makes it seem like the air is toxic. This suit, I, I assume, is a protective, maybe it's a futuristic protective material, but uh, generally rays like gamma rays are going to mostly go through that. Yeah, so there's not a lot, there's not a lot you can wear that's going to protect you from from radiation. You can't just enter a radioactive area wearing any sort of suit that we know at our time. But this is the future. Yeah, or maybe it's the past. You're a deep guy, Nat. Yeah, this goes beyond gunsmithing. This is yes. creating spaceship parts. This is actual rocket science. I don't know why it's shooting sparks like that, but that's never a good sign. Now it says here there's a hermetic seal nearby, so there may be modules that uh, have some materials and there you see some modules looks like we're getting into higher radiation he's down to zero rad it's a miracle you can't get rid of radiation like if you are contaminated with radioactive particles from fallout from a nuclear detonation then those that's physical dust and debris you can get off yourself if you've been exposed and you've been irradiated that's damage to your cell that's ionized ionizing radiation from like gamma rays that damages you to your cells. You don't just get to decontaminate that because it's already done. It's like putting yourself in a microwave. If once the, once the damage is done, you can't just run yourself under cold water. It seems that there were different uh, reasons for being there. Some of it, there was the plane crash where they didn't intend to be stranded. And there was a situation where they intentionally were going into the, the wilderness, into the tropical jungle. It's very simple. You have to have supplies. You have to have skills. These are the things that are going to decide whether you're going to be successful in an austere scenario. All right, Stranded Deep, the green hell, the long dark, no man's sky, super, super entertainment, hours and hours of fun. It was a great time going over survival scenarios on these video games. I'm Nat, the preparedness guy. You can find me on Instagram at the preparedness guy or my website, preparednessguy.com where you can get a free family emergency plan. Now, if you would like to learn more about medical preparedness from me, Dr. Joe Alton, check out our website at Doom and Bloom, the survival medicine handbook on Amazon, our quality medical kits at store.doomandbloom. For more expert react videos, follow Gameology on YouTube and Facebook. See you next time. I'm Joe Alton, MD and medical. Oh, I'm... <laughs> All right. It's all right. Take, take a deep breath. <laughs>